What's going on guys? This is Naga in Cambodia coming at you. And so this is kind of like, well, I don't want to say my final analysis because it's really not my final analysis. It just is in the sense that I know how things work here in Cambodia. Uh, I've been here just a little bit over five months now, and now I can say I fully know, I fully understand how this place operates. And so I'm just going to break it down for you guys, give you a little bit of history of what's been going on with me in five months, and just kind of, I'm just going to kind of go over it you know put it in layman's terms and tell you exactly what most of you guys uh, not want to hear I'm, I'm gonna give you the truth but I'm gonna tell you what you want to hear too because it's what I would want to hear if somebody was in Cambodia and I never been there before well first of all when I first got here I, I was in the days uh, I didn't know whether I had made the right decision I had you know I didn't know what was going on because you know I'm looking at all the third world apartment buildings and the facades and I'm just like you know I ain't seen really nothing American yet not like I wanted to but you know my first time out of the United States I decided to go on the other side of the world so you know it was it was pretty exciting it was pretty exciting and um, I'm telling you you know I have really set the bridge up for you guys out there and I hope y'all appreciate what I've done because again I came out here by myself I never been outside the country uh, United States and I decided to come to Cambodia because it was uncharted territory and plus I knew the women were gorgeous over here I saw a few YouTube videos uh, when I was in Las Vegas and I said hmm it looks like it's a lot of fun over there I think I'll go to Cambodia plus I had a friend in Las Vegas that was from Cambodia and uh, you know, he told me one time, hey, you should check out Cambodia. So I've always been the type of guy, I never want to do what everybody else is doing. You know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, um, again, I come from a family. My father wasn't a business owner, but my grandfather was. And you know how things skip a generation. And, you know, um, you know, I just, I, I never been the type of dude that just want to do what everybody else is doing, whether it's working at the same job. And in this case with traveling, it was like, okay, every guy's talking about South America. Every guy's talking about the Dominican Republic. I want to do something that black men and majority of white men are not even talking about as far as travel. And so I thought Cambodia would be the perfect place to go. So basically, I mean, I'm going to tell you guys in a nutshell, you got to be crazy. You got to be out your mind not to go to Cambodia. Especially if you're trying to be an entrepreneur, you're interested in opening a business. I don't care if it's a car wash, a restaurant, a clothing store, uh, anything like that. You know what I'm saying? You can do it here because the retail space is cheap. Your liability insurance is going to be cheap. You're not going to have Big Brother looking over your shoulder all day to try to do you in, do your business in. Uh, you're going to have the support from the Cambodian people. They are not racist. Uh, they love you if you love them and it's all love that's that's all I've gotten from this place is love yeah it's gonna be some people looking at you funny here and there but like I said before in another video there's people there's more people looking at me funny in my own goddamn uh, country and so I definitely recommend this place and uh, now that I've been here it's pretty plain and clear if you want to come over here and, and, and you want you want to um, have a submissive wife and stuff like that it's very easy I mean but you want to come over here with an entrepreneur mindset because most likely you're gonna either open your own business or you're gonna support you're gonna be a co-owner and support somebody else's business and you're gonna bring new ideas to their business as well as the fact that you speak English okay if you want to come over here just to play around then come over here play around and, and go back to where you came from because uh, these people are business owners, all right. Ninety percent of these people own businesses. Doesn't mean that they make a lot of money. It just means that they take care of themselves, and that's the kind of mindset they have. Uh, you can't come over here with the mindset of, oh, I just want to work from nine to five and go home and get on YouTube and then play video game. It don't it don't work like that here. Uh, you have to come over here with a business mindset, and you gotta want to be in business. If you could do that, then definitely, like me, I know two owners out here. I'm pretty sure if I took them to the side and say, hey, I want to invest in your business, they'll say, sure. Uh, uh, one of them has daughters, 
and be like, hey, you know, I want to invest in your business and I'm interested in one of your daughters. They're going to sit down with you, black man, and say, hmm, let me see what you're talking about. Let me see what you're about. They're not going to judge you. They're just going to, they're just going to let your actions speak louder than what you're telling them. Believe that. So if y'all come over here and you ain't about, if you playing games over there in the United States, wishy-washy, schizophrenic, any of that stuff, please don't come to no Cambodia because these people are real and they're about business and they, they do deserve the best of us. Okay, that's why I'm here because I'm, I'm one of the best. Anybody who sees my YouTube channel knows I don't play games. I don't get involved in, in stupid uh, politics with uh, people. I just get straight to the point about what's up. You know, me going on 40 years old, I mean, hey, you know, I'm looking towards retirement. I'm trying to figure out, okay, what do I want uh, my next 10 years of my life to be like? Because I, I sure don't want to be playing around with, no, with uh, nobody in the United States. Definitely no Negroes, okay? And so I just got to put it plain and simple like that. Um, I would say, let's say you came over here with $20,000. You would be set. Okay. If you're a man, you're around the age of 40, 35 to 40 years old, I say you got a good 20 grand. You can come over here and you can really go into business for yourself. And, and whether it's by yourself or like I say, uh, getting into business with one of these other owners out here, bringing some concepts and ideas and your language to them and ex help them expand the business and then you can have access to all the goods and and, and uh, you know things that you want it, it's, it's these people here they work hard they play hard alright if you like that kind of talk then Cambodia it'd be a great place for you alright they work hard they play hard alright um, again you know I know a lot of you guys looking at the women especially the one that I have on, on the cover on your thumbnail here Hey, I've seen Cambodian women even darker than this woman on this thumbnail here. Yeah, I've seen them real dark. It's just that I can't get them on my YouTube because every time I see them, it, it happens so fast. And it's not like I can just be walking around with my phone up all day. I mess around and get hit by one of these motorcycles, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, there's, there have been women almost darker than me with, with bodies like sisters over here. You know, so I heard some of you guys thinking that they all look like Chinese women and skinny. Nah, uh uh. I've seen some that that whew, look just like black women, okay? Just as dark, okay? Thick, all that. I've seen all shapes and sizes and colors over here, guys. All right? I'm trying to think of anything I want to say before I let you guys go. Um, but yeah, I didn't basically told you the nitty gritty. You know, you come over here, you want you want to live your life like you Batman. Somebody get you a nice motorcycle you know it's gonna, gonna cost you a thousand dollars if you driving around here like like the ninja the ninja that you are yeah you can do that here you can be roaming around like batman you can you can have this world the world is yours you can have it when this woman that you see in this thumbnail riding on a bike with you and you know it's so funny you know it, it's amazing how many women i'm actually communicating with that don't even speak english I even joked with my buddy. I was like, "Man, it's like I'm communicating more with these women over here than women who spoke English in the United States." I'm like, "Man, what what is wrong with that situation?" You know what I mean? It's very very strange. Uh, but this place is very safe too. I, there are no police driving around on the blocks harassing people. You folks in the United States live in a police state, okay? You live in a police state. I'm from Chicago. I live in Vegas. It wasn't a day or hour I could be out walking around where it wasn't some police stopping some black man or a white man driving around on the streets, following up behind me, checking my plates. I, the police do not come in the neighborhoods. These people run, the people own their blocks here in Cambodia. Okay? This is it. When do I see police? The only time I see police here is when they're giving somebody a ticket for like running a red light. Other than that, you don't have police cars running, you know, driving down no neighborhood. You have kids playing night and day. The kids don't, the, excuse me, the children don't go inside when they, uh, when it get dark in here. The children go inside around, I don't know, like 11 p.m. They, or they go inside when their parents go inside. That's when they go inside. I see 10-year-olds riding around in, on motorcycles. Y'all hear me? On motorcycles, riding around. They, they are... They are on a higher level. I'm sorry, this is not third. They are on a higher level than you Negroes in the United States. I, I just gotta say it. I just gotta say it. I, I can't help it. You know, it, it's it's somewhat embarrassing. You know what I mean? It makes you take a different look 
at your people. You know, and especially having a grandfather that owns his own business and, and having two fathers in my life, you know, in the way that they talked to me about things growing up. But now that I come over here, now I really got to, now I really going to be hard, you know, on my so-called black people because, I mean, y'all not taking care of business. Y'all just sitting around and just, just talking, you know, all about talk, you know, not, not about, not enough action. And so that's that's all about I got, uh, all I got to say about it, guys. I think right now probably the best countries, uh, as far as going and meeting other women, if you will, uh, interested in taking a wife, and uh, not necessarily being involved in, in in some kind of hardcore monogamous relationship. That's another thing I want to mention. I don't really think it's all about hardcore monogamy over here, uh, but that's another story. I want I don't want to spend too much time on that, but. Uh, Bottom line is, you work hard here, you get to play hard, okay? It, it's it's give and take, all right? But again, if you're about games, if you don't know yourself, if you don't have knowledge of yourself, if you're not into learning, please, please don't bring your black ass over here to Cambodia. Stay over there in the United States and, and stay with all the rest of the bottom feeders, all right? Another thing I want to say is that you guys can thank me later. I have set a bridge for brothers to come out here to Cambodia. Number one, they did give me a hard time about getting an apartment here because I didn't have a job. And they gave me a hard time about getting a six-month visa because I didn't have a job. Well, thanks to yours truly, uh, I managed to get my way through both of those hurdles. Um, made friends with the landlord, fulfilled my six-month agreement. And now anybody that comes over here and mentions my name, they're going to let you in no problem. Now, the thing with the visa... I went to the travel agency. They didn't want to give me a visa because I didn't have a job. So, one of the, one of the uh, guys that I know, contacts that I know out here, got me a six month visa on the underground on the low low, for a good price, uh, one hundred and sixty dollars. I, I took them twenty, and uh, there I had a six month visa. He took my um, my passport from me. I didn't know I, I did not have my passport for two weeks. I had to trust him. And I got my passport back in two weeks with my six-month visa. You see? So, again, you could thank yours truly. I have set the bridge for any brothers that want to come over here and get their business taken care of and get in an apartment. Uh, whether it's high-end apartment, low-end apartment, I got the hookup for you. All right? So, just want to let y'all know that sacrifices that I have made. It's not wasn't just for myself, all these things that I'm doing over here. It was for other brothers that want to come over here and do well. Alright, so y'all take care out there, and peace.